Hi friends, so I am back a few days after publishing my first live video about COVID-19, the novel coronavirus that seems to have taken over all of our social media feeds. And I have gotten a lot of feedback on that video. Um, I wanna first and foremost just say thank you guys for sharing this video, um, for all of the positive comments that came out of that video, for all of the thank yous that were provided on that video. Um, I never thought that 100,000 people would ever see my face like in my entire life, let alone in three days. But quite honestly, if that's what it takes to help people understand what needs to be done, then I guess I am okay with becoming Insta-famous, hopefully just for a short while. I decided to make another video because it seems that what I said resonated with a lot of people. Um, I have no secret agenda. I have no desire to be famous. Um, I'm certainly not making any money by doing this. I'm just in my home office today talking to you guys. I just feel like this is the time that our community needs to come together. It needs to act together because that is our fighting chance against this virus that has literally become like our middle names. We use that word coronavirus probably more than any other strange word in our vocabulary right now. It's all we talk about with our friends, our neighbors, our spouses, and we need to be able to do something about it. Um, it only takes a few of us to, who refuse to listen and understand and act on the behalf of others that is what is going to let this virus, virus continue to spread in an unleashed manner. And so I don't know if this video will go around the way the other one did, but I thought I would take a little bit of time just to quickly tell you guys who I am so you understand where my perspectives are coming from. I'm 41 years old. I live in Central California in Bakersfield and I'm a wife and a mom to two kids. I did my undergraduate education at UC Irvine and then I did four years of medical school at UC Irvine as well. I did three years of a general pediatrics residency at UCLA and then I stayed and did an additional three years and did a pediatric nephrology fellowship at UCLA. So I now take care of healthy and sick kids and a small portion of my practice is dedicated to taking care of kids with kidney problems. And while my training did not make me an infectious disease specialist, I certainly worked with the best of the best and I cared for the sickest of the sick. The sickest of the sick. I learned how to interpret data. I learned how to identify the sources of where the data was coming from and I learned how to make my own conclusions based on the information that was given to me. And this is why I think a lot of what I have to say is invaluable because this was not an easy task. It took years and years of learning in order to be able to interpret data. And so this is why I want to come to you as a physician who knows how to do this and to be able to help people understand um, all of the information that you guys are basically being flooded with. And I will tell you that I think every single doctor that I have ever trained with, that I am still in contact with, feels the same way I do. So I know there's some people out there who don't believe this, but when all of your doctors are saying the same thing, I think it's time to listen. And what came about from reading the comments um, through my last video is that what a lot of you seem to be struggling with is that you don't know what to believe. One news outlet is saying this is a hoax, and another one is saying prepare for 1.6 to 2.4 million people to die from it. And we have all these curves and charts all over social media, and I'm sorry, I did take notes so I could be accurate with you guys. And not everybody understands all of that information. And so my goal was to come to you today and present reliable information with what I found so far and what I think we need to do about it. And of course, Everybody wants the numbers, and I get it. I am a numbers person too. I have loved science, I am black and white. Um, I don't like the gray and the wishy-washy. And I am always looking for evidence in order to change how I practice before I just 
suddenly change my ways. But the problem is with coronavirus right now, this is not a perfectly designed medical study. It's real life. The numbers we have are always going to be a few days behind and they will not reflect every single person who has this virus. I get that, but I don't know that there is anything I can do or you can do to change that. And whether the mortality rate is 0.1%, like it is for the flu that we deal with every year, whether it is 0.9%, which is what the most recent data show in South Korea, or whether it's 1.5%, which is what our current numbers in the US reflect, with 63 deaths being divided by the total number of cases of 3,324 as of a few hours ago. Regardless of those numbers, we have to do something about this because this is not your common cold. This is spreading and this is going to make people sick. Our numbers eerily look very similar to what Italy had two weeks ago. Italy is a well-developed country with an advanced medical system comparable to ours that is on military lockdown, something that I have never experienced and I am hoping not to experience. Their doctors are literally pleading with us to listen because they are beyond their capacity to take care of patients. They are turning people away who are struggling to breathe. And that is not something that I as a physician ever want to do. And I don't think it's anything that you as a patient or a patient's family member want to deal with. So we have to try to change the trajectory of this illness. And honestly, as of right now, I believe that it's going to continue to mirror the Italian experience because it only takes a few of us to refuse to listen and to basically counteract what the rest of us are trying to do right now. And unfortunately, I'm still seeing birthday parties and sleepovers and unnecessary travel and trips to clothing boutiques and coffee shops right now, even on my own social media feed. And these are things that we have to cut back on yesterday, quite honestly. So I decided to pull um, a lot of my Instagram followers where I had also posted this video to ask them, what can I help with? What can I teach you? What information can I share that is valuable? And I got lots and lots of responses, which is great. And so I wanted to finish this video by answering a few questions. And the first is just the basics about this virus. Um, coronavirus actually was discovered, I believe, in the 1960s. Um, traditionally, it causes your common cold, along with lots of other viruses. And this is actually why you're seeing it on the, ba on the back of Lysol bottles and Clorox bottles, is because coronavirus has been around for a long time. But coronavirus also has the ability to mutate. And mutated versions of coronavirus is what have caused other more ag aggressive diseases and pandemics, like we saw with SARS in 2003 and MERS in the Middle East. The virus itself, including COVID-19, is spread through respiratory droplets. Our coughs, our sneezes, our saliva, our snot. It can circulate and live in the air for about two to three hours, and it can travel about six feet from the person that it comes out of. In terms of how long it lasts on surfaces, to be honest, I don't know. I have read reports that say six to eight hours and some that say two to three weeks. I think that it's probably somewhere in between that. Um, viruses typically need a human host in order to survive, so two to three weeks seems a little bit long to me, but the main idea is that um, it's not going to die immediately as soon as it touches our desks or our countertops. Um, it does have some viability there. The virus is going to enter our systems through our mouth, our nose, or our eyes. It is not spread through any kind of skin-to-skin -skin contact. The incubation period of this virus means is two to 14 days. <clears throat> what that means is that you could get it in your system and you could have it for up to 14 days before you start to manifest any symptoms. There is an average of about five days before you start to see symptoms, if you're going to have any symptoms at all. 
And that's why it's so important for us to stay home now before you're feeling sick because if you have this virus in your system and we all continue to go about our daily lives and of course we breathe and maybe we accidentally sneeze because the spring is coming or we clear our throats um, maybe we share spoons maybe we share straws um, we're spreading this virus without even knowing that we have it the symptoms of COVID-19 in short are fever cough and shortness of breath so relatively simple but also very common symptoms. If you have these symptoms and you think that you have been exposed to COVID-19, then it's important to call your doctor or call your orchard care or call your emergency room. Um, please don't immediately go into these areas that are already packed with patients because it could further escalate the spread of the disease. Um, many offices are trying to set up for telehealth so we can talk to you um, the same way I'm talking to you right now, but obviously with more confidentiality, um, and or are setting tents up outside of the offices or emergency rooms in order to prevent the spread in a more confined location. Of course, if you're having difficulty breathing um, and it's severe, then you need to seek medical attention right away. If you are able to, please let your providers know that you may have been exposed as soon as you are able to, or if there's someone next to you, have them tell them, um, because we have to do our due diligence to protect our healthcare workers as well. A lot of people have said, what can I do at home? Um, it's very basic. You guys have all seen the memes. You need to wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. That has been found to be equally as effective as disinfecting with hand sanitizers and Clorox. Um, in terms of what sanitizers are good, I know a lot of people are confused now because they say they're antibacterial and this is a virus. A 60% alcohol-based sanitizer will actually kill coronavirus. The ability of sanitizers and alcohol to kill different bacteria and viruses is based on the specific quality of those viruses and bacteria. But for coronavirus, 60% alcohol will work. So vodka will not, but rubbing alcohol will. Um, the other thing you can do is stay home. The whole purpose of what we've been talking about to date. I think a lot of people don't understand either or have questions about what degree of social distancing do we need to take right now. And I really believe that if we act now, we act mindfully and we act quickly, we might be able to avoid a major military lockdown. And what this means is we need to avoid our group gatherings. We need to avoid sleepovers, play dates, birthday parties, concerts, movies, theater presentations, athletic events. Yes, even for our kiddos whose lives revolve around baseball or soccer. Avoid going to the store or malls if you don't have to. Um, avoid going to the gym. Avoid having visitors or workers come to your house and avoid using mass transit. The things that we can do with caution and really only when needed is to go to the grocery store and to go to the pharmacy. And yes, I understand that this is going to have major economic implications. I'm not denying that. Um, small and large businesses will suffer during this time. And I truly wish this wasn't the case, um, but this is not just your average cold or flu. Um, a military lockdown would probably affect their business far greater in addition to their regular lives than what I'm asking us to do right now. Um, school. So for those of you who live in Bakersfield with me, um, this has been a great source of contention over the last few days. Um, the largest districts in California have closed their schools. Pasadena Unified is actually offering meals from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Monday through Friday in their school bus drop-off zone um, for those kids who rely on meals um, from school in order to eat. And I understand that this is not an easy decision for our administrators to make, but it's time. Our kids need to be out of school. And I will talk a little bit more about why in just a moment. Um, I personally have taken my kids out of school 
and will be working with them at home to the best of my ability because I do think that it is for the greater good of our community to make sure that our little people are not spreading this virus. Um, next is certain populations who are fearful for their own health, um, specifically pregnant women and their newborns, those with asthma, valley fever, or those who are immunocompromised either because of a condition they have, um, including diabetes, as well as medications that they take. <clears throat> From what we've seen so far, this virus has a very strong predilection for the elderly, but what makes the elderly different from myself, for example, is that their immune systems are not quite as strong as they once were, and they're often dealing with these long-term medical conditions. So I can't quote you on how this virus is going to affect that population of people I just spoke to here in the United States, but I do know that this group of uh, pregnant women, newborns, asthmatics, those with valley fever, those who are immunocompromised, tend to suffer more with the common cold and even with the flu. So I find it hard to believe that if these populations do get affected by coronavirus, that they are going to have a mild disease. And for those who have asked me personally about their own um, concerns because of what medical conditions they have, I have told them to act with the utmost abundance of caution. Stay home, stay away from people. It's just a few weeks, but if it makes it to where you go back to your regular life soon enough, then it will absolutely be worth it. A lot of you have also wondered about what are the risks to our children because most of what you're hearing is that kids are going to be fine. And again, what I know is what's coming out of other countries. And it does seem as though the risk to our children, um, particularly those under the age of 10 and largely under the, even the age of 30, we're not quite kids anymore, but um, we don't seem to be affected by, very severely by this illness. And I don't know why. Um, there have been some different hypotheses that have been presented, but honestly, none of them quite make sense to me. And I'm sure in time we will figure it out, but we can be grateful that at least our kids are protected at this point. The problem is that our kids are going to be the ones who are the vectors. They are going to spread the illness because they will have it in their system and yet they are going to feel fine. They are going to continue to play, they're going to continue to eat, they're gonna to continue to share their poor um, hygiene standards with their fingers everywhere and it's going to spread to their parents and to their grandparents and to their neighbors. And this is why we need to keep our kids as well as ourselves inside or away from large groups. This is why every large school district in California and now across the country is starting to shut down because people are starting to realize that our kids are going to be the vectors. So while we can be grateful that we don't necessarily have to worry as much about their health and well-being, we have to understand that they may be the ones who are spreading it to those who we care about and are on the other end of life spectrum. Lastly, people have asked, um, how long is this going to last? Is um, spring and warmer weather going to just help nip this in the bud? And while other coronaviruses that do cause the common cold and influenza tend to follow a seasonality, um, we all know that we tend to get more colds and flus in the winter and particularly in the Northern Hemisphere. We don't know how seasonality is going to impact this virus. Um, we're still seeing that the virus is present and it's spreading in areas where it is very warm and humid, such as Australia, Singapore, and Brazil, but yet their numbers are much, much lower than ours as well. Um, so hopefully that is something that Mother Nature can help us out with. But again, we don't have enough evidence, data, or literature to tell us one way or the other. So in short, um, there's a lot we don't know, but what we do have, unlike a lot of other previous pandemics, is that there's another country who is in a near identical place to where we are today, just two weeks ago. And now they are in the middle of a national crisis and a military lockdown. So if staying indoors is what we need to do for a few weeks 
to prevent that type of crisis here and to pr protect our parents and our grandparents and our medically fragile, I just don't understand why we wouldn't do it. We can pretty much rearrange everything else that I've talked about. Life will go on as we know it, and it will probably do so by May. So let's just shut it down. Let's enjoy each other's companies. Let's go back to a simple lifestyle of just being at home and protect our community at large. Um, this is really not about you individually or your opinions. It's not about me or my opinions. It's about protecting our community. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you so much and let's see what happens.